Hi, welcome back. And in this tutorial, we're going to look at creating a basic um, Hello World Swing application. So um, I've got Eclipse running here, and I'm going to click on this workbench icon. And if you're using a different IDE, then it's going to work pretty much the same as it does in Eclipse because they're all basically similar. So I'm going to go to File, New Project, New Java Project here and I'll give this a name, I'll call it Swing1 and I'm just going to accept all the defaults so I'll click Finish and um, I'm going to right click my project folder here or I could optionally go to the, alternatively go to the file menu and I'm going to do New Class and I'm going to call this class App and I'm going to tick this checkbox here to generate a main method automatically so this is just a um, an ordinary kind of um, Hello World Java program without the Hello World, but I can already run that by clicking the green Run button, and it will just run and finish. So I want to run it as a Java application. There we go. Um, and now I want to turn this into a basic Swing program. So we're going to be using classes from the um, built-in Java Swing. Um, window toolkit package and I mostly begin with J and in this tutorial I'm going to be using one called JFrame so I'll create a variable of type JFrame which I'll call frame and I'll set that equal to a new JFrame and in the constructor here I can pass in a string which will be the title of my window so I'm going to set that equal to hello world like that now the um, the J frame um, is not visible by default, uh, and to make it visible, you have to call a method called set visible. But before I do that, actually, I'm going to add the import, which I could do by clicking on this error icon here and going to import J frame. Or in Eclipse, you can do Control Shift O, which stands for organize imports, and that does the trick. So I've imported javax.swing.j frame. And, and now to make the frame visible, I'm going to do frame dot set visible brackets true, uh, and that's all there is to an absolutely minimal um, swing program. But as we'll see in a second, it's not very satisfactory. So if I run this, it creates this tiny window up here, and um, I can expand it. It has got the title "Hello World" there. And if I click the cross in the corner here to get rid of it, the application doesn't actually quit. And the way you know that is usually you'll see like a red button down in the bottom right corner here in Eclipse. And I think it's pretty similar in um, NetBeans or IntelliJ. If you don't see it, like I'm not seeing it now, then in Eclipse, go to Window and Show View Console and then you'll see that button there. And the fact that it's red tells me that the application is actually still running even though the window's gone. So let's click that to terminate it. So now it's finished. So to fix um, the two problems there, I'm gonna do frame.setDefault close operation. And I'm gonna to pass to that a static member of JFrame, which is exit on close. And what that does is it tells the application to quit when you click that cross to close the window. So when you close the window, your application is now going to terminate and you can see that the red button goes grey. The other thing that's wrong with that is um, it's very small. So let's make the size bigger. I'll say uh, frame.setSize. Frame.setSize. And let's make this maybe 600 by, I don't know, 500. And if I run this, now I've got a um, quite nice Hello World program, which quits when I click the cross. And there is still a little problem with this. Now in, um, in previous versions of Swing, like, uh, I don't know, maybe Java 4, possibly Java 5, I'm not sure. It used to be the case that this was um, all you need for a Hello World Swing app. But uh, at some point, Sun started saying that you need to run your Swing app in a special thread. 
And I think this is only of concern if you're going to be doing uh, multi-threading in your Swing application, but better safe than sorry. What you need to do is, um, I'm going to use a static method of the Swing Utilities class. So the Swing Utilities class has a method called invoke later. And invoke later needs a class that implements the runnable interface. So I'm going to implement that interface with just an anonymous object, an anonymous class here, by saying new inside the um, function brackets there. Actually, I'll put the semicolon in already. And inside these brackets, I'll say new runnable, like this. New runnable, round brackets. And then open a curly parenthesis, and Swing has just put the closing one in automatically for me. And um, the runnable interface, you may know, has one method called public void run. And if I click this warning icon here, I can add this automatically in Eclipse, public void run. Or I could just type that myself. And let's get rid of this um, the stuff here, a few blank lines and things. And you just need to put your code here in this public void run method. And now you've got a... Um, hopefully more robust Swing application that runs in the approved manner. So if I run that, it just looks the same as before. Um, but presumably it won't crash in some circumstance where otherwise it would if you hadn't done that extra step. But no one really seems to know, to be honest with you. Okay, so um, in the next tutorial, we're going to start looking at adding some components to this basic Swing app. So join me again then. And until then, happy coding.